and things like that. It, it's not altogether untrue, but we must see an evolution as we go forward with the Tea Party movement. There are Democrats who are conservatives, Democrats who believe in the Constitution. They too need to be members of this movement. This movement needs to be bigger than either party to make a difference. We've seen movements come along and sentiments that have been important and pervasive and have really had an effect in the United States. They're a little different because they were always identified with one individual. Uh, who here remembers 1980? Remember John Anderson? He was a congressman from Illinois, Republican, and, uh, and was really independent, kind of broke away from, from his party and was very independent, and people prized that independence, and he ran for president, and he got 5%. And uh, when's the last time you heard the name John Anderson along with, with Tea Party sentiment? You haven't in a long time. People forget. Now, nobody's ever going to forget uh, H. Ross Perot. In 1992, and he was going to run against, uh, uh, no, it was 1980. No, it wasn't. It was 92. And he was going to run for president, and uh, everybody loved Ross Perot because he could finance his own campaign. And, and he was talking about things about independence and the things that the government's doing wrong and the things that the government needed to do right. And his fiscal suggestions were great ones, and he had a lot of momentum. And uh, he got almost 20%, I guess it was 19% uh, of the vote. 20 million Americans voted for Ross Perot. And where is he in those principles today? Still a prominent businessman, still the same smart guy and stuff. But the interest that he garnered and the momentum he gave to fiscal conservatism is no longer with us. And, and that's what we need to preserve. The Tea Party movement's greatest value is not just today, it's not just the 2010 elections and the 2012 elections. 2014 and 16 and 18 and on in the future to watch over and watch that tax rate. I think uh, one of the things that, that, that I was told that the slogan for today's Tea Party get together was remember November. And it is very, very important to remember November. There was a Texas House race in El Paso that was won just a very few years ago by 10 votes. 10 votes. Every vote counts. If everybody sitting here today on the lawn takes five people to the polls, that would probably be 300, 400 people in Howard County and will change the direction of things. And I think that is particularly important. And it's important to do always. When we look forward, I think another one of the slogans is says, we won't be done until 21. And all that means is, is that the Tea Party needs to become more active and make more inroads and have a greater voice till the principles of the Tea Party become as much of the principles of the federal government as their entitlement programs. That so many people just take for granted and realize that they cost somebody. I talked earlier about the state of Texas having an $18 billion deficit and that's a tough deal and we're having to tell a bunch of agencies to cut their budgets and some good agencies that, that we want and we value things like community colleges MHMR and, and things like that it's temporary we have a solid and we have a structurally strong economy in the state of Texas but not all times are good in the state of Texas we need to prepare for that there are going to be good times and good good economies in Texas but we cannot afford to have a government that's only a good fiscal ship when the economy is at its best. We have to be able to provide the things to people in the state of Texas when the economy is not so good. And we will only do that with sound and responsible fiscal policies. I've said this in Howard County many times, the government should be short of money because if it's not, the American people and the people of Texas are, and it's our money. And so when you hear the government say, well, we don't have enough money for this, we don't have enough money for that, the option is learn to live without it. Because the people who live in America can't. They've got to feed and educate their families and provide for their health care. Every government 
should really have to work hard. It should be a little bit of fiscal difficulty, wondering where money is going to come from. And I can tell you this in the state of Texas, if uh, if we don't know where, we're, if we know that we're in good shape financially, it probably means that you're not. And that's not right for the government. These are basically fundamental principles, and it's amazing that now so many years after the Constitution was signed and the Bill of Rights were passed, we're still talking about those fundamental rights, and we talk about smaller government, and, and, and now everybody comes on TV and says, I'm for smaller government, and the truth is, ladies and gentlemen, they're not. Republicans and Democrats. And let me give you some of the simplest examples about the role of government, the things that government ought to do and should not do. If you have a politician who says, that they think the legislature ought to tell the city of Big Spring whether they can or cannot have red light cameras, they are not in favor of smaller government. If you have an individual who says restaurants cannot serve foods with trans fats, rather than providing information and let people make a personal decision, they are not in favor of smaller government. I'm going to give a couple of awards, and I haven't, this, these are Big Spring awards because I really haven't talked about it anywhere. The Tea Party City of uh, two years ago, anybody want to guess what it was? Lubbock, Texas. Lubbock, Texas, and here's why. The city council went in, they passed an ordinance that said they were gonna have red light cameras, and they put in red light cameras. And then the people of Lubbock said, we don't like red light cameras. We might like a new city council. <laughs> and so they took out the red light cameras. Just the way government ought to work in response to the people. Tea Party individual of 2010, or at least July of 2010, uh, is a Democrat. Dick Durbin, Senator from Illinois. Now, he's not perfect because he voted for the government's health care plan, but in July he went on TV after all the things that we told, and it made it sound like the health care plan was something like manna from heaven, and, and he went and dispelled the most significant important things to the American people about that plan when he stood before a podium and said that this health care plan is not going to help reduce the deficit like the American people have been told and it is not going to reduce the cost of health care. The first responsibility that people have who we entrust with public office is just to tell the truth. Now he went and voted for the health care. He went ahead and voted for the health care plan because nobody's perfect, but he gets the award for July anyway. <laughs> but that's really why we're here, is about limited government and government that listens. You know what the best experience I have as a member of the Texas Senate, and it's not passing ordinances or working in the Texas Capitol and, and all that kind of thing, and, and that's all fine. I do a town hall meeting in every one of the counties that are in the district. And then I get called back because the, the county seat in Parber County is Friona and the folks in Bovina think they want a town hall meeting. That's good too because that's where I find out what people are thinking about. What they are thinking is the most important input I have. And I appreciate that. This is a vocal community. There is never much wondering what folks in Big Spring think or want. Certainly not from your community college president from the mayor and the county commissioner. It is a joy to work with people like that who respond directly to the people who live here and know what the community wants and needs because the public tells them. But the Tea Party program, the, the, the basic themes and the philosophy must continue on and that's the message today. What can we do to perpetuate the Tea Party sentiment and make it grow? So that becomes a prevailing philosophy in America, not liberalism or conservatism or things like that, but limited government. Once again, and this should come as no surprise, Ronald Reagan said it best. Man is not free unless government is limited. As great a day as this is and as great a message as you will hear, nobody will say it better. Thank you very much, and, and it's a joy to be here today.